Okay, I am guessing we are live. Now, this is the first time I'm actually doing this solo. So before I actually begin my prezzo, I wanted to make sure you can actually hear me and you can see me okay. So I'm just going to wait a few moments. It's going to be a bit awkward, but let's just be patient with it. <clears throat> we are live. Now, this is the first time I'm actually doing this solo. Okay. Right, I'm going to assume everyone hear me. So before I begin, I'm going to be sharing some slides which I haven't done before. So you may lose me on video. So before I get stuck into that, welcome to my career workshop series. It's a seven part series and today's the first session. It's all about self-evaluation, but I'll be going through that shortly. Just give me a moment and I'm going to share my screen. I'm actually live on Facebook as well as LinkedIn and YouTube. So hello to everyone, whether you're watching right now or perhaps on the replay. Hopefully you can now see my screen, but you probably can't see it as a presentation as yet, but you will be doing so shortly. So anyone with me who can say, yep, they can hear me, they can see me. Maybe I'm assuming yes. Let's get stuck in. I'm going to actually share it as a presentation. So let's begin. Hopefully you can still uh, hear me right now and you can actually see the presentation ahead of you. Give it a few minutes. So whilst I'm making sure that that's all set up, I wanted to just um, quickly introduce myself. My name is Jo McCatty. I'm the founder of Proto Science, which is a startup business. What Proto Science does is it helps people to get to their next career destination. That's what I love doing most. You know, having worked in the recruitment space for the last 20 years, what I discovered is it's not the transactional side of things. It's more the, the how and the what and the why people um, embark on doing something new. I also help businesses recruit and retain talent effectively. Now, I have done it throughout my um, career tenure in the STEM space and within life sciences, but it's um, it's not just dedicated to those sectors. So whilst we're growing through this information, this is in respect to any sector, any level um, in terms of hierarchy. So hopefully you'll be able to get some value and some benefit. It's a micro learning session, so we're not gonna go through too much. So hopefully you get something from this today. So it's all about how to create a career roadmap. That's what's going to happen at the end of the seven sessions with today being the first one. Session one, all about self-evaluation. Now, before I get stuck into, you know, what goes into the self-evaluation piece, the career roadmap, this is the pictorial view, if you like, of what we're going to go, go through um, in the series, in the seven part series. And um, the dedicated one for today is self-evaluation and how to articulate your professional story. Then we'll go on to role possibilities in the art of salary negotiation. There'll be branding, portfolio. If these things don't resonate with you, don't worry. We will go, be going through them at a later date. And then the fourth session will be all about networking, strategy and approaches. And then we're going to be discussing how to articulate your voice, you know, so you come across as self-confident and authentic. And then it comes to the point of actually creating your career plan. I don't know, I can't really make it interactive right now, but I'd love to know if any of you out there have ever actually had a career plan or a career roadmap um, that you've created. If you have, um, fantastic. If you haven't, at the end of the seven part series, you'll be able to have one. And then the, the last session, it's all about how to continue to do these things throughout your career journey, even if you are happy in the role that you're working in chances are you're going to want to do something more moving forward. You know, we all want to either elevate our career or transfer our skills. All I know is through the people that I've been coaching, career purpose is aligned um, to what they do in their life. And so it's important to have a career roadmap which allows you to grow and to contribute and to add value and impact, which is what everyone is seeking, especially these days with the changed market conditions that we're faced with. 
So that's the career roadmap. The seven sessions will be going through all of this. I just wanted to give you a visual view of that in particular. Now, back to uh, self-evaluation. You know this quote. I think it was Socrates that suggested it. Knowing yourself. Knowing yourself when it comes to your career is equally as important as knowing yourself in your everyday life. And the way I see it is, you know, self-evaluation, it allows you to take ownership and take control back, not having to wait for others to validate your skill set. And knowing yourself and knowing what you actually want, it's the first step to creating the career roadmap. It's so important to be able to sort of understand what are the skills that you like using most and then figuring out why is that? And, you know, how do roles and opportunities actually tie into that? So let's go through the seven um, steps of self-evaluation. As a key starting point, you know, just making a, some time for yourself to actually articulate what are your skills, what are your attributes, and what are your traits. Now, I don't know what it is about humans, but we, we tend to love doing self-analysis, whether it's, oh, you know, the color blue denotes this part of my personality and therefore I'm a positive person. So doing an assessment will give you insights into yourself, you know, what kind of leader you are, um, you know, how you approach working on projects. What is it that you want to do in your working vocation that's going to actually add value and make an impact? So understanding what your very skills are, it's quite important to do that. And using an assessment of some kind to be able to give you more insights is quite valuable. Now, I'm not going to name drop any assessments to use, but there are many out there that you probably already have completed and you will complete many more moving forward. Um, but yeah, that would be the, the first thing that I would do is do an assessment, start to jot down some of the skills and attributes and traits, even ask your network and people around you, what do you think about me in the working environment? You know, your work colleagues, what's it like to work with me? How do you see me as being, you know, when you work on a project with me? Um, yeah, just describe me in a few words. And so you start to collate these insights. Uh, you also have some self-reflection. And it doesn't stop there. So what tends to happen in um, many uh, situations that I've come across when I'm talking to people about their career journeys and, you know, wanting to embark on that next stage, we never actually articulate what our achievements are. We always kind of hold back and say, mm, you know, I feel a bit embarrassed or, you know, yeah, it's no big deal, you know, let's move on. And, and But really, I would like to challenge that status quo. I think you should sit and actually pick two or three achievements that you've had throughout your career journey and start to know what they are and how it actually made you feel, you know, at that point in time, obviously happy, joyful, you're giving people high fives and hugs, um, you've got an award of some kind. You know, stopping and reflecting on what we consider to be our key achievements gives us insights into the things that we really connect with, giving us that sense of purpose in the work environment and using certain skills that are kind of, kind of connect to joy and happiness. Because after all, we all want career happiness. And this is the whole purpose of me supporting people with their next career destination. I want to help you get ahead. I want to help you find that joy and that happiness because after all, you're more productive and it's kind of beneficial to the business as well. And so whether it is you not working in a role and you're trying to find one or you're working in a business and you love the business and you're not really sure about how to embark on the next move within the organization, that's something I can support you with. But yeah, achievements, really critical for you to pick two or three and note down what they are. Now, moving on to the next section, uh, defining moments, otherwise known as challenging situations that you would have come across. Now, in the work environment, you probably come across a project or a difficult stakeholder. You had to influence them in some way. It's facing adversity and checking yourself to see who you show up as when that happens. Are you the kind of person that is unflappable? Or do you need some time to go away and process it? Or is it a fact of you freak out and you need to talk to people to get to that point of feeling quite comfortable and confident about what actions you need to take next? Defining moments could also be from life itself. 
So uh, just think about three, three in particular that you would have come across in your whole life journey slash career journey. Now let's move on to big decisions. Big decisions over the last 12 months. Now, as we all know, it's been changed conditions uh, because of the C word. And we would have had to make a lot of decisions, whether it's on the personal front in the home environment or within our career and our vocation, you know, remote working and uh, flexibility. Some people had their roles impacted and had to, had to find opportunities within this time. So what big decisions did you have to make in the last 12 months and what impact did that have on you? Pick two or three. Now, what does this all lead to? It helps you actually come up with some options when it comes to your career. So looking at the possibilities, so you're framing it in terms of, okay, who am I as an individual personality wise? Why, why do I have certain skills? It's because they're the things I'm good at. They're the things that I like to use because I'm happy to use them. Don't you want to you know, use more of that? You know, capturing achievements, defining moments and big decisions, it all gives you a sense of who you are. So knowing yourself more and not waiting for someone else to validate what your skill set is. And by the way, usually when it comes to, um, you know, the moment in time when you're having to do an interview, you may actually sit down and start to write these things because you're going to get asked certain questions and you're going to want to articulate it in a certain way. The way I see it, why wait for an interview to be able to articulate your professional story? This is the ultimate. I mean, I come across so many individuals, even myself, you know, it's an iteration as you go along when you describe what you've done in your career and the impact that you want to make moving forward, you know, how you articulate professional story, TEDx style, if you like, we all want to be able to do that because we inspire others, but we also get the point across about what we actually want to embark on doing next. So, um, Really quick micro session on self-evaluation, why it's so important to know yourself, know your skill set, and therefore it leads to actually knowing what you want. First step of the um, career roadmap. I know it's a whistle-stop tour. I'm very quick at talking. I'm a visual person. You could probably tell that's my learning modality. But if you found this useful, stay tuned. There'll be more. There'll be session two coming up next week at the same time. And I just wanted to do a little bit of a shout out. I'm, I've created a Slack community and I'd love for you to be a part of it. If you found this insightful and useful in some way, please go ahead and join. So I'm going to stop sharing for a moment now and see what you thought of that. If you thought it was useful, it was a quick whistle stop to it. If you're wanting to go through self-evaluation in more detail, I'm happy to hear from you. So let me see if anyone's listening and I can, um, yeah, sort of take some comments. I see that, Ashley, you couldn't hear me, but Michael, you could. Thank goodness for that. Right. So um, that was really quick, 15 minutes. That's what you'll expect. Same time next week. Over and out for now. Take care.